Hi there, I'm Colin Klupik, and this is my mobile workbench. It incorporates a Festool MFT table and a nice flat work surface here on the right hand side, which gives me a total length of 2.4 meters long, 780 millimeters wide, and 940 millimeters tall. The cool thing about this is that it means I've got one nice long continuous work surface with cross cutting capability with the use of the track saw. It's really versatile, it moves around in my small workshop, and it's been really great to work with. Let me show you how I made it. It's basically two ladder frames supported by four legs, 2400 long and 780 wide. This means a lot of simple marking out and plenty of track saw cuts. I was surprised actually at how well the saw cut through the deep section whilst balancing the track on the narrow beams. It was a fairly repetitive process, so I won't bore you with all the cuts. Not much dust either, but any excuse will do for my son to use the vacuum. And why not? Clean as you go, right? From here the setout started to take shape. Getting all this square without an extra set of hands was going to be tricky. Fortunately, I have a set of 90 degree clamps which makes this job so much easier. I used 14 gauge batten screws on all the joins. I wasn't going to get fancy on the joinery, and this was going to be way strong enough. And 100mm length would give plenty of grab. Gluing was a bit tricky, and you had to be quick on the vertical surfaces. The Makita 12V impact driver made very short work of installing the batten screws. I wondered how good it would be, but in the end it was awesome for such a small drill. The process was simple for all the corners. Check for square, glue and screw. In a few places I had to use 75mm screws to avoid sticking out the other side. And again, the 12V impact driver worked really well for this task, I can recommend it. Here you can see the two frames starting to take shape. And yes, I did regularly check diagonals for square. In the end, I managed to get it to within about 1.5mm over the 2.4m length. And that's square enough. Joining the top to the bottom required a bit of mucking around, but once I had it set up I was able to align the corners and glue and screw. What's so interesting about the LVL beams is they're relatively light to handle, yet very strong and most importantly, straight. This makes building rectangular frames like this so much easier. Now for a quick length check. Yep, 2400 long and 780 wide. Perfect. And there you have it, most of the frame done. Time for a coffee. Water in. Coffee in. Battery check. Yep, three lights will do it. Hit go. Now, time to see what my Greyhound is up to. She loves to be around when I'm working. Sleeping most of the time actually, not much help. Coffee's ready, time for a break. Now for the casters. In my garage cleanup, I found a bunch of old roofing screws that will go perfectly with these casters. Now I can flip this thing over and start wheeling it around. No more creeping around on the floor at last. It's very light and easy to manoeuvre. I did also paint the frame with some leftover white paint. The red looks cool, but I didn't want to leave it exposed. The Festool MFT arrived on a small pallet. It took three days from Melbourne to Newcastle, which I thought was very impressive for a large item like this. Well done, Festool. Unboxing this thing was fun. It's always exciting to get new kit. It's very well packed and mostly assembled. Not much to do except for opening the accessories box and fitting the bits and pieces. You'll notice that leaves a space next to the MFT which isn't level with the top surface of the MFT. The plan was to build a worktop to the same level to end up with one long work surface. In case you're wondering, the MFT is exactly 180mm tall, which makes building a worktop to go with it fairly simple. I'm using some reclaimed MDF from the previous bench. A simple design, two supports with a top screwed down on them. 
then trim up some leftover masonite for the top surface. I had to put in this little extra strip. The piece I had wasn't quite wide enough, but I wasn't prepared to buy a whole new sheet at this stage. I used the shelf underneath to store longer items and offcuts from larger sheets. At 2400 long, this takes standard lengths well. The worktop is finished off with a tassie oak edge, and it's finally taking shape. And here it is. Overall, I'm really pleased with it. It might seem strange to use a mobile MFT on top of a mobile bench, but this gives me the flexibility of a long work surface, with the option to take the MFT off and use it somewhere else if I need to. Or One thing I didn't mention was that on top of the frame, I've actually used a piece of 15 mm birch ply, and that's to create a nice flat, even surface to put the MFT on and to build a work surface. And that gives me a nice, flat, smooth transition between these two surfaces here to give me that nice, long, uninterrupted work surface at the top. Now you might think that birch ply is a little bit too nice to use for this kind of application, and you'd probably be right, but I wanted something that was really nice and smooth and flat, and the birch ply works really well for this. And the bonus is I get to keep the offcut for some nicer projects. So there you go, my mobile workbench. I had loads of fun making it, and I really enjoy using it, and I hope you got something out of watching me make it. We'll see you in the next one.